Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, tonight's video is going to be another instructional video and this is going to be showing you how to uh, clean up or do a simple overhaul on an Olympus pin half frame camera. Uh, this video is going to be for the original pin which was uh, produced in the late 1950s and there were a few variations of this uh, particular camera. Uh, this video should be able uh, to give you information about all of these variations. Uh, this particular camera is the earliest version, uh, which you can tell by the, the grayish or greenish uh, leatherette around it, and the fact that it has a two-blade shutter and the f3.5 lens instead of like the f2.8 lens which came on the Pin S. Uh, basically, they are all the same camera, the original Pin and the Pin S, and even some of the Pin S's came with an f3.5 lens. There's really no difference in performance between the two lenses there. One is as good as the other. One is a little bit faster, but in most cases, I seldom shoot these cameras in anything, I guess, uh, uh, wider than f5.6. So the difference between f3.5 and f3.2.8 isn't really uh, of much point to me. Uh, another difference between the S model and the early model is the shutter. Uh, this early version had a two-blade shutter with a maximum speed of one two-hundredth of a second, whereas the later pins had a five-bladed shutter with a faster speed of, I think, was it one three-hundredth or one four-hundredth of a second. I'll be also uh, in this video showing how to unstick uh, shutter blades in one of these cameras. Uh, that's generally not a problem with the cameras with the f3.5 lens. For whatever reason, these shutters rarely stick. But the Pin S models with the f2.8 lens are very prone to sticking, unfortunately. We don't need a lot of tools to do this job. Uh, we need uh, a few screwdrivers, miscellaneous slotted screwdrivers, as I have here. We need uh, some cotton swabs. Uh, we need some uh, lighter fluid, which I have here. Uh, a pair of needle nose pliers. And also... Uh, a box cutter like this or some kind of razor knife which has a sharp edge. So, uh, and also uh, another thing which we might use or which you need to use for cleaning out the lens is a uh, spanner wrench. Uh, like this one here with points on it, but if you don't have one of these tools you can make do with a pair of, uh, I guess, needle nose pliers with sharp points or a pair of tweezers. So, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I usually do uh, when I get one of these cameras is I take a look at it and see the overall condition and I look for any damage on the outside. This one has a, a ding on the bottom cover, which uh, doesn't really mean much. Uh, these cameras are pretty well, they, they often are dented, but uh, the dents seldom make any difference in how they operate. Uh, the viewfinder in this one is very hazy uh, and I can't even see through it looking through the front or through the back for that matter. I can barely see light coming through it when I look at the monitor through the viewfinder. Uh, the shutter speed working turns okay. The focus helicoid is smooth. Uh, the aperture turns okay. Uh, the shutter works but this is the f3.5 model and as I said the shutter pretty much always works in these. And the f2.8 model, as I mentioned, uh, it often uh, doesn't work. So, uh, the first thing I would do with one of these is uh, start working on cleaning out the lens to see if we can uh, get it cleaned up. So, the first thing I have to do is remove the back cover. And like early 35mm cameras made in Japan, the uh, F you have to remove, the pin F, you have to remove the back cover to access the film chamber. And the shutter... Uh, leaves are quite easy to see, they're right in the back of the, the camera there. Quite easy to access if they're dirty or need cleaning. And also that we can access the back of the lens if that ha has to be cleaned. To do that we have to set the shutter speed to the bulb setting. And I take a, a cotton swab, a little uh, a drop of lens cleaning fluid, and charge the shutter and then simply uh, clean it out. It looks fairly clean from here. 
the viewfinder and rangefinder is quite hazy, or I shouldn't say rangefinder, but the viewfinder is quite hazy in this scene, but the lens is quite nice, which is uh, kind of a surprise. And the front looks quite clean. Uh, what we can do to clean the inside of the lens, we have two options. We can either remove the front lens element to gain access to the inside of the lens, or we can remove the rear rear lens element. And sometimes I remove the rear lens element if the inside of the rear lens is especially hazy and needs uh, more cleaning. Uh, these lenses aren't really susceptible to haze, but they do get some fungus on the inside from time to time. If you hold open the shutter, you can see the, the notches in the rear lens element where you can attach a tool to remove it. Uh, usually it's easier to uh, remove it from the front. So I'll go ahead and uh, using my uh, lens spanner with the uh, points on it to find two holes around the outside and I'll go ahead and hold on to the center the aperture ring and turn it and the lens group comes out just like that and I'll go ahead and make sure the aperture is all the way open and Simply clean the lens element like so. When you clean these, when you are rubbing the glass with the Q-tip, uh, when you're drying it, it tends to first dry and leave a haze with cart cotton particles and stuff like that. And as you continue rubbing, the haze comes off and leaves the clear glass underneath. And once I have the it more or less cleared out, I'll just blow it out with a little bit of compressed air. Then I will clean out the rear lens element and blow it clean. And simply thread it back in like so. And that's all there is to it. Uh, then I have to clean the outside of the front lens element. These are often scratched in these old cameras or they have a lot of cleaning marks. Uh, a little bit of scratching, a little bit of cleaning marks don't really make any difference or much of or a noticeable difference in the performance of the len these lenses. Uh, the cleaner they are, the better, but they don't have to be super clean to deliver good results. Uh, if it's really dirty, I'll soak the front lens with uh, a lot. I won't pour uh, fluid on the front lens, but I'll make sure I get the cotton swab really, really wet. So it kind of lifts the dirt and stuff off so I don't rub it in. And I'll use two or three uh, cotton swabs to clean it out just to make sure that I don't add any marks. And then I'll just kind of clean out the dust and dirt from around here. And uh, the lens is nice and clean. So uh that's the another the, i guess the first important part uh cleaning out the lens and getting it clear uh the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the viewfinder and range finder so we'll go ahead and start on that in just a second all right so as i said the next step is to clean out the the viewfinder assembly and for that job you simply need a to begin with a slotted screwdriver and the first thing we'll do is remove the film rewind knob and there are two steps to this. Normally, to remove the film rewind knob on most ca cameras, you simply stick the screwdriver in the fork and the rewind mechanism and simply turn this counterclockwise. But on the Olympus pin, you also have to remove this uh, screw in the middle. So you have, there's the screw in the middle and the uh, fork shaft is also threaded. So these have to be kind of taken off uh, at the same time. And kind of be careful not to lose any parts. Uh, when you take this out, there's a spring and a screw. I just close it like this and set it inside so the screw and the spring doesn't come out. And you usually find spacers under the top here. So I'll go ahead and uh, take the spacers out and Put them next to the rewind knob and then of course the, the shaft itself falls out. The next thing we have to do is we have to remove this uh, screw around the self counter or excuse me film counter and this is one of the most difficult things here because this screw is uh, reverse threaded which means you have to turn it clockwise to get it out 
and often these are kind of stuck and they take a little bit of strength to get loose. And a lot of these cameras which I come across, the these are a little bit they're a little bit chewed up. You know, interesting thing when you work on these cameras is that um, you you sometimes find odd and unusual things about them when you stuff like unexpected. And this one here is like, it doesn't want to go, it goes a little bit one way, then it stops going, then it goes the other way and stops going. And with cameras like these old Olympus or some other versions, sometimes I find that uh, they surprise me. Uh, I, I'll take off a bunch of these things and they turn off to the right and then I get one and it turns off to the left. And I, I get what are like two identical cameras and I figure, well, I can use one for parts for the other one. And then I find out that the parts don't fit. They look exactly alike, but they're, they're not. Things like the Olympus Ace or the Yashica 35 cameras, they all look alike, but they aren't really. And over the different years, there were some variations. And uh, a lot of times the parts don't interchange. On occasion, I've I found these uh, screws where they're normally supposed to be reverse threaded and they have standard thread. So they're like early production models and then later on they decide, well, you know, these come off when people are using them. So let's go ahead and use a different kind of hardware on it. All right, uh, next thing we need to do is remove this cover uh, on top of the flash shoe or under the flash shoe. And it's hard to get these off without scratching them. What I do is I use like a fine screwdriver like this where you can use a pick. And I kind of put it under the arm and I try to twist it to get all the way underneath and lift it up a little bit. And then pry it back so it comes off like so. You can pry it off this way, but uh, you'll have to do it a few times and you usually end up scratching the cover a few times trying to get it off. Uh, you can take off the two screws on this side. Olympus cameras, like the, the system with these two screws under the film rewind knob, they use this system all the way up to the OM series. On this side here, this particular camera has a screw here, a slotted screw which comes out. Some of these cameras don't have a slotted screw. They have a, a large, I guess, lanyard ring, and that is the screw which holds the cover on. So if it doesn't have a screw there, you have to put a tool through the lanyard ring and turn it around leftwise, and then you can get the top cover off. Okay, and then the last thing we have to do is remove this screw in the center on the flash shoe. And once that's done, the top cover uh, should lift off. All right. So when you have the top cover off, there are some things in here which are common problems which you can fix when the top cover comes off. Uh, one problem is that every time you wind the shutter, uh, the shutter fires instead of waiting. And what that usually means is this, uh, I guess, this mechanism here which moves left to right as you operate it and you fire the shutter it's supposed to move back and forth but sometimes it sticks in the forward position so every time you wind it the shutter simply fires so to fix that problem uh, you need to add a little bit of uh, oil and put a little bit of oil here around this first screw and around the mechanism on this side where the other screw is just so it will move freely when you wind the shutter. And I also put just a tiny bit of oil on other places where there is friction and things are supposed to move. I don't put any oil around here because I don't want any oil working its way down to the shutter. Yeah, that's probably the the most common problem these cameras have is a sticking shutter and the second problem they have or most common problem is the shutter uh, fires by itself when you wind it. So usually a little lubrication will, will stop the uh, automatic firing uh, on, the, on the shutter. 
So uh, that's all we need to do with this. I'll go ahead and set it aside and uh, the next step here is going to be cleaning out the viewfinder and uh, uh, I guess no rangefinder, viewfinder assembly. Okay, so now we're going to clean out the viewfinder assembly. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it upside down. Uh, there were a few variations of the pin and pin S made and structurally they are basically the same but there are some minor differences. Now, some of these cameras were made of plastic around the viewfinder assembly and some were made of metal. Uh, personally the plastic ones are easier to work on than the metal ones but however the plastic ones are more fragile and easier to break. So uh, the first thing we need to do to uh, get this out of here for cleaning is to remove this dust cover. So there's a kind of a combination of paper and metal dust cover. And there are a couple of tabs on either side and I kind of just pry those up and then just peel this off. And like so. And this one's a fair amount of glue on it. It's like someone uh, not so long ago cleaned it out, but that's hard to imagine considering how dirty it looks right now. So uh, once we have the cover off, we see uh, three screws here. There are two brass screws and there's a black screw in the middle. So we have to remove these three screws. And with the screws removed, the entire viewfinder assembly comes off and the flash shoe comes off as well. I'll go ahead and remove the, the top cover out of the way and the flash shoe out of the way and I'll turn this over to get the screws to fall out. I don't mind that that one stays in because that's a hard one to put back in. So uh, when you take these apart you have to look for a few different uh, things. Uh, first, uh, make sure that this this mask in here, this is made of glass and it has the frame lines on it and these sometimes become unglued or move around and then the alignment of the frame lines isn't correct. So you have to make sure that it's in the right position and that it's uh, square and that it's oriented the right way. Uh, if it's loose you can apply a little bit of glue to the top on either side and that'll lock it in place. Now what we're going to do to make this clear is we're going to uh, remove the glass on the end like, like so. Uh, the other glass will leave in place. There's a beam splitting mirror here. There's kind of a, a convex lens here. Uh, there's a regular mirror here. And this is the uh, viewfinder mask. And over here we have a couple of uh, lenses for the uh, viewfinder. And in front of that we have the glass cover. Uh, to get this properly clean, we have to remove the glass cover and we have to remove these two lenses. And these can be kind of difficult to get out. Uh, I use the cutter to remove the glue which holds it in. These are held in place with glue. And these ones with the plastic are usually just held in with a very simple cement which is kind of easy to get out. Whereas the ones with the metal housing, the pin S, uh, those use epoxy to hold them in and they're quite hard to get out. But the method for removing them is the same. You simply cut away the glue scrape away the glue uh, with the razor knife and try to get it out. Wiggle it around and it slides out like so. And you can see how dirty and hazy this one is. You can't see through it. And we also need to remove these two lenses here. So what I do is uh, using the knife I will cut the glue which is holding it in like so and there's glue on both sides that hold in both the lenses and pop those out and then there are two lenses and I simply uh, take them apart. Uh, it doesn't matter which order these lenses you put them back in they're both identical so if you put this way or this way it'll still work fine. So I'll go ahead and blow the dust out of here a little bit and uh, the glue I use for this uh, work is this Bondo G17 glue which is very popular here in Japan and is what most camera people use for doing miscellaneous work. 
before I get to, too far into this, I'm going to put some glue on this uh, focusing mask because it is a little bit loose and I don't want it to be loose. When you're losing, using this glue, make sure that when you pull the applicator away that it doesn't leave a string or something or a web which falls inside and then you can't see it when you're putting it together but when you put the camera all the way together and you look through the viewfinder then you can see it and then you have to take it apart to, uh, to clean it back out. Alright, so I'm going to start by cleaning the mask and the mirrors and the inside lens so what I do is I take my cotton swabs and my needle nose pliers and I simply flatten the tips and that way I can reach inside into the tight places and clean them all the way from corner to corner. And then I get a fresh one. It's so much nicer to use these cameras when the viewfinder is uh, clear. Uh, it's much easier to to see what you are uh, taking a photograph of. This one here was a, especially nasty, especially on the front. I don't know how it got that way on just the front. Nothing else, seem, else seems to be so dirty in here. All right, and then I'll do the rear lens, so I'll get ready to... Glue here, here, on the rear lens there's a flat edge and there's a curved edge. The flat edge is the one which goes to the inside, excuse me, the curved edge goes toward the inside and the flat edge faces to the back. I clean this up with a microfiber cloth. It's a good idea to wash your hands before doing this kind of work because it gets the oil off your fingers and uh, you avoid leaving any fingerprints on the, the glass parts when you're putting them back together. Okay. Alright, and the next step is cleaning these guys. Make sure to clean them all the way from end to end. For whatever reason, these concave ones is very easy to miss parts on them. A lot of the Olympus cameras. Uh, the rangefinder cameras like the the Ace and the S models and things like that featured these dual lenses in the front, and cameras like the Ashika CC and CCN also use them, and they always manage to get dirt in between the elements, which is always a kind of a difficult thing when you're trying to clean out the the viewfinder of these cameras. Those are clean, so I'll go ahead and slide them back into the spot where they belong. And push them down flat. And then put the glue in the original spot so they stay put. Okay. And the last part to clean is this uh, lens on the front. And clean it off with my fingers because I can kind of feel where the, after time I can kind of feel where the worst of the dirt and the haze and stuff is on these. Now, one thing about these is sometimes the, the glass used in these cameras and in other cameras it sometimes gets a kind of uh, marks or haze or something like that on them which you can't really clean off with uh, lens cleaning fluid. 
The only way to really get them clean is with some kind of polish. So you can use metal polish uh, with a cotton swab and wipe the marks and that'll usually get those off. But uh, of course that doesn't work on the matte glass on the back. It just works on the glass that you're going to be uh, looking through. So that's done. So we'll go ahead and uh, drop that back down in the front. Uh, some of these cameras have a paper spacer which is pushed down in here and that kind of keeps pressure against the glass and keeps it from being pushed back in. Other versions don't have that, so uh, you know, a little variation between these cameras. Uh, last month here in Japan, some guy, some collector, sold a whole bunch of old uh, prototype cameras on the Yahoo Auctions Japan. And one of them was the prototype for the Olympus Pin S, and it was kind of hand fabricated out of uh, sheet brass and stuff like that. And I was quite amazed. I'd have loved to have something like that, but uh, these are like one of a kind things, and uh, the, the selling prices were quite astronomical. So uh, there are still a lot of serious uh, camera fanatics here in Japan, and when stuff like that comes up, uh, you know, there are, pe there are some people who will spend anything to get it. And unfortunately, I don't have the, the kind of money that some of these uh, guys have to buy these things. But uh, on occasion, I get uh, lucky. It was like uh, a few years ago, I bought a, a Yashica uh, CC camera, which was still new in the box. And I was surprised to get it new in the box. But then I looked at the serial number, and it was a 690001. It was the very first one made. And I was, it wasn't advertised as such, but if it had been shown as a, having the original serial number on it, the price would have been kind of uh, incredible on it. So, let me go ahead and put some glue on the ends of the glass plates. Just a little bit like so. All right, and the viewfinder is now cleaned and put back together. And we have to uh, reinstall it here on the top cover. Clean this up just a little bit. So uh, to reinstall it, uh, take the uh, flash shoe cover and arrange it like so. Then I will go ahead and take the top of the camera like so. And then I will actually just lower that in on top and uh, if everything is lined up you can see the screw holes underneath uh, the screw in the back never came out so I'll just go ahead and uh, tighten that in uh, then I'll put in the black screw in the center these always fall in the wrong way Last one there. Okay. And blow out any dust. I don't blow too hard because I don't want to blow anything out that uh, the glue isn't dry on yet. Then I'm going to glue back in place the dust cover. keep those webs from the glue out of the way. And I'll go ahead and uh, look through it. I'm looking through it just to make sure that the frame lines are centered and not too high or not too low or not crooked or anything. They look fine. One thing you have to be careful with these cameras is when you sometimes these get knocked loose and the framing is not right and it's kind of difficult to set up. Uh, to adjust it right. Okay, that's back in position, so now we can put this back on top of the camera. Now these cameras come with a, a light seal which goes <coughs> around this channel here <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me, while the top cover is off you can replace the light seal. 
Uh, for myself, I don't bother because uh, for one thing, it makes the top cover get it you know harder to take on and take off and light never leaks around here anyway. And when I use the rubber seal material, eventually it, you know, it, the original material is going to dry, rot, and dust and debris is going to get inside, so I don't bother. I'll replace the light seal, of course, on the bottom door, because it's possible to get light leaks from there. But there's no issue with not replacing the light seal on the top, so uh, I, I don't put it in. And take the shutter button here and make sure that the spring is located on it. And... Uh, the hole for the uh, <clears throat> cable release should point toward the right. Some of these cameras, the top cover like on the pin D series comes off kind of in the same way, but the, the shutter button is oriented the opposite direction. So we'll go ahead and press that down, and the first screw I'm going to put in is the center one, which goes in the middle of the flash chute here. And then the two screws there. Wow, that one fell right into place. That doesn't happen very often. And then the screw for this side. orange one oh. and these always have to fall out at least once I can't get uh, all of them in without an issue especially when I'm holding it under the camera for to get a photo of it and I'm not looking at it as well as I might be otherwise the flash chute cover till it locks in place and put the spacers in there when I put this back on I make sure to push the lever down on the top because then when I thread it on usually the screw and the knob will go on together like it did here and that makes uh, the job a little bit less complicated. And then turn it and make sure it turns okay. If it's not turning or it's binding, one of the spacers underneath isn't centered properly and it might be pinched. So you have to loosen it up a little bit and center the spacer and then tighten it back up. And then I'll take this and I'll turn it till it sits flush like so. And then tighten this in, turning it counterclockwise. Okay, and test it and make sure the counter is working. Okay, all right. So, uh, so far we've uh, cleaned out the lenses on the inside and out. We took apart and cleaned the viewfinder assembly and that is nice and crystal clear now. So this is a nice, clean and good working camera. Uh, the last thing I would do on this if it were a later one and the shutter was sticking would be to uh, uh, unstick the shutter. There are two ways to do this. Uh, the correct way is to remove the entire shutter assembly and clean the shutter blades one at a time. And that's kind of a difficult process. You have to take apart the top of the camera and unhook the uh, uh, shutter release uh, or shutter winding mechanism. You have to remove these four screws here and loosen the leatherette and lift out the lens and shutter assembly. Once you do that, it's not so difficult to get the shutter apart and put back together again, but for people who are watching this, they're probably not camera mechanics, so uh, that's probably beyond them. But if you have a camera where the shutter is sticking, uh, take some lighter fluid like so. Oh, excuse me. Uh, wind up the shutter, wet the shutter blades, 
and then cycle the shutter a few times. If you have the five bladed shutter, you'll notice that it might run slower or stick while the uh, shutter blades are wet or while you're doing this. Blow it off a couple of times like so, and that will free it up. And repeat the process three or four times, and then let the camera sit overnight and try cycling the shutter and uh, clean it again. Uh, wipe some lighter fluid on there, cycle the shutter a few times, blow it clean with the air, and then let it sit some more. And eventually, the shutter will eventually become reliable and fire more or less accurately. And uh, you know, this is in the case where they are not too bad. In most cases, the shutter is not especially dirty in these cameras. It's just collected a lot of, I don't know, haze or whatever, and a tiny bit of oil from sitting. They don't use a lot of oil in these things uh, for lubricant, so it's not too much of an issue. The F3.5 uh, cameras, the shutters pretty much never stick in them, but the 2.8 models more than likely it's going to have a sticking shutter or the shutter is going to run a little bit slower than it should. So cleaning it up a little bit will speed it back up. And of course it, if you want to go all the out and clean it properly you can do that too, but uh, uh, it's better uh, left to uh, tech or something or someone like that. Uh, the last thing that we would do would be to replace the light seal on the bottom here. I have a video which shows how to replace light seals in film cameras, so you might want to check that out if you want to know how to replace the light seal. But uh, this particular camera, uh, the important stuff is, is finished and uh, it's good to go. Uh, clean viewfinder, clean lens, the shutter seems all within spec. Uh, uh, nice, clean, and ready-to-shoot camera. Uh, as it happens, this particular camera has already been sold, but I do plan to have a few more of these. If you're interested in purchasing a vintage Japanese camera, I sell these at my uh, Etsy and eBay stores in my new online store, japanvintagecamera.com. Uh, please check the description below the video for links to my stores. I'll be posting more videos about vintage Japanese cameras, photography, and other things in the near future. Uh, if you'd like to see those, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.